All right, so welcome to you who are here uh, live and welcome to those who are watching the recording. So uh, today I wanna uh, continue my Euro salons that I've been doing for the past, I guess, nearly a year now, past 10 months, um, and go to London in the National Gallery in London. Now, the purpose if uh, for the, of these Euro salons is for me to do research to prepare for these European trips I've been going on. So I've done two trips already this year, one to Madrid um, back in March, and then a longer trip, a three-week trip over the summer where I hit a lot of museums. And in anticipation of those trips, I did a series of Euro salons. The next country is England. And in anticipation of England, I'm going to do a series of uh, several Euro salons. Uh, I've already done one in England, the Tate Britain, um, which I say is probably so far as I, as far as I know right now, my favorite art museum in England. Um, and I, I've been to England once before I spent three days in London. I went to the national gallery. So I'll, I'll, I've got a little bit of first second experience of the national gallery and um, I'll share what I think is distinctive about the museum. What I think is special, Stephanie, I'll be curious to see if you, know, you have any memories, um, and I'll I'll share from my online research primarily and a bit of a memory of uh, when I was there seven years ago, a little bit about um, my, well, I'll share my, my five favorites or the five that I'm most intrigued by. Now, these are not artworks like in, in the book, Touching the Art, where I've spent a lot of time with these artworks and I've gotten to know them and um, I have a, a solid connection with them. These are kind of, I... I know them a little bit. I saw them. I'm intrigued by them. There's one that I know the background story for and the others I, I kind of know. So the salon type of situation that we have here is just to kind of read the artwork together. I'm less of a guide and more of a, a participant like you in, uh, in a discussion and bringing that story and the artwork to life and then personally connecting to it. So um. I'll share that in a moment. Um, I've got a couple of announcements I'd like to share. So if you're interested in, in, in donating and contributing to my European travel fund, please feel free to, but this is not an admission charge. Um, not at all. It's it's just voluntary. i um, got a couple of QR codes, one for Venmo, one for PayPal, if you want to donate, but that is definitely not uh, mandatory. Um, I'm going to share... A couple updates regarding the the Touch and the Art app and TTA two hundred one brief updates, and then I'll unveil the rejected artworks, the artworks that are not going to make the top five, and I'll explain why they're not making the top five, and then I'll I'll share those top five, and we'll spend time with one, maybe two artworks, and we'll go for about fifty minutes, maybe up to an hour, and then if you want to stick around and hear a little bit about the uh, uh, TTA two hundred one. I'll preview that, um, share some of the the artworks that are there, talk a little bit about it, and answer any questions about TTA 201. Okay. So first up, um, the Touch in the Art app. The new approach I've been taking to it is an art chat every week. So every week I have somebody I interact with and a 15-minute chat that's on audio, post a new artwork, and you... Um, and you get to have these preceding questions that you get to think about and do your own reading of the artwork, but then you hear me and Joseph or Ifat or Kirk or other uh, touching the art enthusiasts and friends and artists um, or art lovers read the artwork together. And I'm hoping that this is maybe something that's a little bit more um, dynamic. Maybe it's like a miniature podcast. And... I'll share, if you don't have the link to the Touch in the Art app, if you're not familiar with it, I'll put that in the chat right now. So this is a link to the app and you should be able to access it there. So that that's something that's kind of new. Um, and then every week, the goal is every week to add uh, a new artwork and um, a new art chat. 
Now, update on TTA 201. And as I mentioned, I will give a preview of TTA 201 if you'd like to hear more about it after we spend time with it. Um, and let's see, before I share any more, Stephanie, yeah, Stephanie, got a thought, a question? I want to know how does one become a person who does one of these chats with you? I'd be interested in Oh, doing... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like that yeah. would be f fun to do, right? I I I studied art at at school and did it for my high school certificate yeah. in Australia. So it was 4 years with art history and major works and the whole thing. It was like as a major subject because Australian schools were different. You really could choose and leave out some subjects yeah. and focus on the ones you were interested in. So it's really been rediscovering something I enjoyed when I was a kid. And I would love to. I love your whole approach because it's really made the art come alive. And I'd love to become one of your people who <laughs> who does a reading Absolutely. the art. Absolutely. Let's chat. Yeah. Let's 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 we can talk let's about, talk that, about that. Absolutely. I just thought Absolutely. I wanted to put my name up there. <laughs> uh-huh. Absolutely. Hi, Jane. Welcome. And you're more than welcome to listen in uh as much as you can. Okay. So uh just a quick update. Uh registration is open for TTA 201, which is uh kind of the the art appreciation semester long course based on touching the art. So touching the art kind of gives you here are the principles, here are the techniques, but it's it's a manual and you go off and you if you have to practice on your own. The course is let's do this together, let's practice it, let's um, get to know what it means to identify a theme to um, thoroughly be able to read and get most the most out of the artwork, um, to get into the other genres of art, to 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 know exactly how to. Uh, get the most out of personally connecting and how to practice personally connecting so that you feel much more comfortable whenever you come in front of an artwork that you can uh, get the most of, out of it. Um, and I'll, as I mentioned, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Um, so uh, there's a the schedule. It's going to be Tuesdays, 9 p.m. Eastern time, 6 p.m. Pacific, starting October 10th. And if you have any questions now, or later, I'd be happy to answer those. All right. So let's talk about uh, National Gallery in London. Uh, I'll start with the unveiling of the rejected. So these are artworks that um, that excite me, that I'm interested in, um, but I'm not going to include them in my top five here for various reasons. So one of the things that about the National Gallery in London is oh, it's only paintings. It's a gallery of paintings. And it is a, a magnificent resource for the history of Western art, of Western painting, from the Renaissance up through the late 19th century. So you get something like this by Botticelli in early Renaissance, and you get something like this by Vermeer. And you go through a lot of famous and iconic works. It's almost as if the, the museum I think of, if you took um, like a, a college class on art history, you could find all the artworks that in that book and uh, that college class on art history at this museum. And this is a... Uh, a pretty well-known one by the painter Joseph Wright of Derby. And you probably recognize this more by Vincent van Gogh. So there are a lot of iconic artworks or artworks that you would look familiar to you if you took a college class in art history at this museum. Um, I'm not going to feature many of those. As you know, as you probably know, I, I like to go for the works that are a little bit more idiosyncratic that might have something that are not here's the here's the the canon of artworks, but artworks that are speak a little bit more to um something unique about about life, uh, a story that you can connect to. Now, my favorite painting at the National Gallery when I visited it, um five years, six years ago, I don't remember how long ago, 
I'm not include them. I'm not going to include it among the top five. Hi, Joseph. Welcome. It's this one. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm not going to include it here because it it's not owned by the National Gallery. It's one that I've um, I think I've spoken about a few times. But if I were to, um, yeah, I, I've mentioned. I think I've mentioned before. Yeah, that that part of my motivation for doing these um, these Euro salons is to um, make selections for artworks for a sequel to Stories in Paint, um, where Stories in Paint is focused on American museums. Um, this would be a sequel that would focus on European museums. But I wouldn't include this painting in um, in that book because it's not owned by the National Gallery and might disappear at any moment from there. But it's one that I absolutely love. And if you want me to uh, if you know, chat a little bit about it later on, I'll be glad to, to bring it back up. And Joseph, you recently went to the National Gallery, right? I did. did you see yeah. this one? First time in London. I don't recall seeing that one. No, it's a very small one. It's a tiny one. I did and maybe maybe it wasn't even up. Maybe it wasn't even up. Yeah. My primary goal was to see the Da Vinci's, and I saw all the all those. And the Mona Lisa room was a madhouse. <laughs> I, bet. <laughs> I bet. Okay. All right. So, I've got five paintings for you. And if this is if you are new to the salons, here's how I approach it. I'm going to show each of these paintings very briefly, and I'm going to ask you to um, give a an initial title to the artwork, and just put that in the chat. Um, and then after you give an initial title, we'll go through those. And then I'll have you pick the one that intrigues you most. As if you were at the art museum yourself, which one would you go spend time with? Now, that doesn't mean that we're going to spend time with that one. We might. We'll see. Sometimes I, I have salon attendees vote. Sometimes the votes matter. Sometimes they don't. But I want to go through these now and just quickly in the chat, very briefly, five paintings. Are you ready? Here's the first one. What's your initial title for this one? And remember, our initial title is just the first words that come to mind. What did you see? Just name that. It could be as simple as big eyes or lady with hat. Anything that you notice. All right. So, Stephanie, you put down Lady B. Jane, you said taken aback. Now, Stephanie, what do you mean by Lady B? May I ask a follow-up question there? What does the B stand for? What they... And feel free to unmute. Well, to unmute. I, it was, it's a, her real name isn't given, but it is a real person, right? Is what I'm thinking. And so, and so ah. she's, you know, so it's a shorthand. I see. And not revealed, right? I, I was see. originally going to put G like Lady Godiva, but then I went, nah, okay, I'll put G. So, I see. Yeah, <laughs> but, that's, but, that, uh... but that's what it is, is that, that she's, she, you know, she's in a provocative pose, uh -huh. but she doesn't want to have her name attached to it. I see. Okay. Uh, let's be a little bit surreptitious. All right. Here's the next one. What's your initial title for this one? That's it. What do you think? Just the first words that come to mind. I mean, if you'd prefer to speak them, the chat's uh, more challenging. Oh, is Narendra, is that a hand? Go ahead, Narendra. Yeah, the first one I would like to call it, uh, look at me. 
Excellent. look at you. He look seems at to me. Like, look at me. Like second one, I'm not sure exactly. I couldn't see for a long time. So, but I think it could be like I'm there. I'm there. I'm, I'm there. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, like like he's quote. You're yeah. quoting uh, one of the characters like, there. there. Great. Yeah. I'm Great. There. I'm there. Thank Great you, Narendra. Yeah. Thank you, Narendra. Uh, let's see. So, yeah. Stephanie, yeah. you have dreaming of a satyr. Brianna, you have daydreaming. And Jane, you have dreamer. Oh, intriguing. Okay. Here's a third one. What's your initial title for this one? All right, so Stephanie, you have my wife, the painter. Brianna, you have the clean artist. Narendra, what are you thinking? I thought about it because oh, oh sorry, has... go ahead, go ahead, Brianna, go ahead. Yes, okay. Sorry, that's okay. <laughs> she wait, has wait. paint, so I think that she must be painting. But uh -huh. I like to paint. But when I paint, I get all myself full of paint, like all my hands, my cell phone. Everything, my desk, my chair, my clothes, everything gets and she okay, looks really cool. She doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I see I saw Stephanie laugh and react to you, and I bet you're that's you're identifying with that, Stephanie. Uh-huh. Okay. Thanks, Rihanna. How about you, Narendra? What's your title? I would say the splendid. She's very beautiful. <clears throat> the splendid. The splendid. Okay. So beautiful and so striking. Great. Two more. Here's the next one. What's your initial title for this one? Now, Joseph, I know you saw this one. Then. You can't miss it, right? It's huge. I don't know if I saw this one. You know what? 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 Before, before I was mixing up the Louvre with the National Gallery, and that's gallery. That's why I said the Mona Lisa. Oh, oh, that's okay. Okay, I, I, I was wondering about that. I was wondering. Uh huh. I, I want to see it again for a second. I don't know if I can do that. Those aren't, those aren't part of the rules. You only get to view it for two point three seconds. That's it. That's. <laughs> you get to read it afterwards. What's your initial title? Just with that. Uh, let's see what we have. Oh man. Uh, Jane, you have captured Joseph the beheaded. Stephanie, hide and seek. Narendra, how about you? Uh, I would say helpless despair, helpless or, or helping despair. Trying to help, but okay, helping despair, help, but and even helpless despair would work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay, got one more. What's your initial title for this one? These are intriguing. Keep typing if you're still typing. Let's see what we have. Joseph, you have Winter Cross, Brianna, Snow Castle, Jane, Bitter Memorial, Stephanie, The Forgotten Meaning, meaning of Christmas. Interesting. And Narendra, did you have one? Um, I, this is my favorite. I loved it. I would say it's like cold, cold aloneness, not loneliness. Cold. cold aloneness. All right, like, great. Like love, but I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. But it's like scary. But I'm holding. It's beautiful, scary, all that whole cold okay. aloneness. Okay, excellent. So those are the five I've got for you, and I'm gonna go back to these. Those are the and so Narendra, it sounds like we know which one you're you like. Uh, but I'm gonna go back through and 
then you can, I'll show them all together and you can tell me which one you're most intrigued by. So we have this mysterious lady who seems to be taken aback, maybe, Lady B. Uh, we have maybe the daydream of a satyr or something else going on there. Uh, the clean artist. <laughs> Where's the paints? <laughs> um, oh, helpless. And then this one. I forgot the meaning of Christmas. The snow castle. Okay. So I'll put numbers by these to make it convenient. And I get to I get to draw. I always like to draw on the board. So there's number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five. Which one would you go to if you were at the National Gallery? So Stephanie, number three. Jane, can't decide between four and five. Okay, Jane, your train to Liverpool leaves in 45 minutes. So you've got barely time for one artwork. Which one is it going to be? Stephanie, number three or number one? Stephanie, you've got theater tickets and you can only spend time with one. Is it going to be one of these two artworks? Which one is it going to be? Oh, it's going to be number oh, Narendra, number five, Brianna, number three. Jane. I put three first, but if there were, if oh, there were, if there were more, I'd go for, yeah. yeah, I'd go with, yeah. Okay. But number three, I, I don't really want to spend time with Christ on the cross. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, Narendra. <laughs> Uh, all right. So looks like we've got a lot of you. picking number three. And let's do this. I'm going to do a little bit of a package deal. Nobody wants to do number two, which was my choice. But I'm willing. I'm willing to uh, to to go to see something else. And let's spend time with number three. But the way that I like to port approach portraits is I really like to have uh, comparisons. And I'm wondering if number three might be a good comparison to number one. Now we'll start off by looking at number three. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you 90 seconds, no, two minutes, two minutes just on your own with number three. And I invite you to write out a reading to describe it to yourself, to do your own mental reading. I'll zoom into different parts of it. And then after that, if anybody would like to share what they've written, I really like hearing somebody else's voice besides my own and your thoughts. And I especially like hearing your reading of the artwork, your experience of it as you wrote it down, going from, here's what I initially thought to, oh no, that's something different. The whole process of you experiencing the artwork, not your final conclusions about it, but the whole process. So let me clear this. And... Let me go over to the painting. All right. So here it is. As I mentioned, I'll zoom in, but I'm going to turn off my mic and give you guys two minutes starting now.
I'm going to give you one more minute, but I'm going to do something different here. I'm going to set up a comparison. So take one more minute, looking up side by side and seeing what comparing them will help you see about the one we're focusing on. As you start to wrap up your reading, uh, I want to invite you to do one more thing. Imagine what they would say, what each of them would say, or, or the main one. If you were to go up and say hi to her, what would she say? All right. Give me an indication once you're good to go. I see, Jane, you have a reading in the in the comments in the chat. And I'll share that in a moment. All right. Great. So let's see, um, Joseph, would you like to read what you've put in the, uh, the chat out loud? Share sure. that with us. Go for it. A fancily clad young artist with palette and paintbrushes in hand is poised to smile and begins to open her other hand, ready to extend it on greeting her subject, whose likeness she seems eager to capture. Pleased to meet you. So, Joseph, you're imagining that she is greeting her subject uh, and she's she's almost about ready to she's about to ready to say hi to greet them, almost lifting the hand up to do so and saying, pleased to meet you. Yes. And yeah. I did see this one. I did see this one. You did see this one. Great. Great. Okay. Thank you, Joseph. So sure. Jane, I'm going to read what you have. So Jane, you said, she looks like she's getting ready to paint. She has a black garment strung around her, her that might serve as a kind of smock. The paints are perfectly prepared on the tray and the brushes look like they haven't been used. But now I just noticed that the paint colors are the colors in this painting. Oh, really? Oh. The paint colors are the colors in this painting, the pink of her dress, the gold of her hat, the black of her shawl. She looks like she's relaxed and open with her hand lowered and being held out. Uh, her head is looking straight ahead in an easy smile. Maybe she's prepared the paints for someone else to, to paint her and she's excited for that versus the other woman who looks like she's covering herself and doesn't want to be anyone's muse. 
<laughs> okay. All right. Great. Brianna, would you like to read yours? Yeah. <laughs> well, the first thing I noticed was like the colors of of her paint. It's like the same color she has on her hat. You noticed that too. So you yeah. and Jane both noticed that. I, I never <laughs> noticed that before. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so I thought like maybe she did her hat and she's not like actually painting something. She's like, oh my God, I just did this hat. Look at my hat. Look at what I did. <laughs> <laughs> and the other woman, she's dressed more like elegant, more fancy, but she still feels awkward. I think she's like awkward with herself. Like she's trying to hide how... The way she really is, because she's like with a big and beautiful hat. She has a beautiful gown, a beautiful dress, but she looks awkward. You can look at her face. She doesn't feel herself on that dress. Hmm. Interesting. So the, I like that word that you're using to describe her. She feels awkward. She doesn't feel herself in that dress. Okay. All right. Thank you, Brianna. Stephanie, would you like to read what you've written? Um, yeah, okay. The sky is cloud-filled, but there is blueness. Lots of clouds lower down. She's pretty, blonde, lovely earrings. Fun hat. She carries a palette with many colors, but she's not yet begun to do much work. The paints look freshly squirted onto her palette. One hand is out, as if she's asking for something. Canvas? A model? She has gray eyes. Her mouth appears to be forming a question or comment. She wants to paint, but how can she, since she's lacking something important that would enable her to get started? Perhaps she doesn't have a canvas. She has a pretty dress and a shawl that's around her shoulders, but it's not a cold day. She's looking right at the viewer. My wife has a middle-class London British accent, not too toffee, but definitely nice English accent. Whereas the other lady, Lady B, as I called her, is not looking at the audience. Her breasts are on display, whereas my wife's are not. Lady B seems like she's more fancy, but she'd have a Cockney accent. Oh, okay. So <laughs> cock does a Cockney accent... Suggest Cockney has a lower class. So I see. Be a lower, she's all toffed up, uh -huh. but with her breast on display is not like my wife, the painter. She yeah. is 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 pretty and is seductive, but it's not. Oh, you got to see my boobs; they're hanging out, right? Whereas this one is trying to get attention in a more desperate manner. The other uh -huh. one is. So that's why I think she she talk and it would be if she sound like that and it would just be like so lower class. Right? Good. I'm glad we got you to do a Cockney accent. Uh. <laughs> I can't remember how to do it. I used to know. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. No. Okay. So what you're seeing is a sophistication in um in her personality and the in the one you're calling my wife the painter. My wife. She's got a silk dress. That's a yeah. silk and it's it's a nice. She's got a little shawl. Yeah. And, but she doesn't really need it because she's not clutching it. It's just yeah. there when it gets chilly later, Yeah, maybe. Um, but the other one is a velvet on. So it is a chillier day. Yeah. And yet she's got her, she's more exposed. So <laughs> she is. she's like a bit stupid. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So it seems like um, for several of you, it kind of helped to see the comparison. Narendra, you want to add your thoughts? Go ahead. Yeah, my observation was uh, somewhat similar to Stephanie's. Like what I found was that uh, it was like a mirror. She's looking at herself. It's like a mirror in her mind or, or in front of a mirror, but thinking. Mm -hmm. And very decorated, very, very decorated. If, if you notice that her hat is very beautiful and her the earrings and the, all the things. If you, if you notice, I can't describe it fully. But if you notice, it's very, 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 very beautiful, literally decorated. Now, when you close up, when you close in on her face, as Stephanie uh, suggested, you can see that, like, you know, have you seen some women who look in front of a mirror? I have seen them in front of me, they did it all. Like, they look in front of a mirror and wonder whether I'm beautiful. Like, like not beautiful, like, they look and just wonder, like, how do I look? Mm -hmm. 
So it seems like that. So it could be, there could be many interpretations. The artist might be wanting to show that. Or maybe she's an artist and she wants to see how I'm going to present myself before. Like she's, a, she's making herself, right? It's very intriguing because if she's making herself, she wants to see herself first. She wants to pose. So pose before I pose. I see. So really, you're seeing her kind of interact with a mirror, kind of wondering mirror. about what yeah. what pose she should take, wondering about her, her appearance. Not yeah. pose she should take, but I'm beautiful. Okay, kind maybe of. wondering about that, whether she's yeah, beautiful no, or no, not. So we got, we got two different kinds of interactions that are being described here. So one where this is the artist kind of uh, thinking about or looking in the mirror, mm -hmm. And then what Joseph was saying, um, a little bit more of, she is greeting someone, and um, about to to say hi, to about to smile broadly as she meets someone that she sees, a little bit. And but I think for both of these, there's both of those. That I think what they both have in common, there's this kind of openness and curiosity, whether it's about herself or about the person that she's speaking to, versus. Um, this is the other other mm -hmm. woman who I felt was I didn't feel she was awkward she was shy maybe shy and was, yeah like, and Joseph like, used the word de defensive and Brianna used the word kind of awkward so we've got these two different personalities here yeah like, yeah like what I'm trying to say like she's open but not open to being open but she wants to be open and she, obviously the next step would be to feel a little shy a yeah. typical woman woman feeling so she's looking like that and she's feeling that and it's, it's very beautiful in her own self but it's actually very starkly contrasted with the other yeah. i would say that she's confident in her own way but yeah. shy but other one is not confident or rather she's preparing to be sure right, I'll, I'll jump in here i'll jump in here because we we uh, want to make sure yeah. to get to another painting soon so yes. narendra thank you um so i'll give a little bit of background i'll give a little bit of background here um, background story, the painter on the right is the woman. So this is Elisabeth. She's French. And this is a self-portrait. So it's a self-portrait where I like to imagine that she is looking at someone, uh, looking at me maybe who's going to be her, the person that she paints and she's greeting me in the way of how she's going to, um, how she's going to interact with me. Whenever I see a portrait, I always imagine that I'm a character or I try to imagine who the character might be that they're looking at. I really, really like <laughs> the observation that these paints are the ones that are in her hat that are part of this, which suggests a little bit of humor to, you know what? This is, this is, I just did a self-portrait of me. And this is how I started off with a self-portrait by these, with these paints. But we have a very, a distinctive kind of personality with her. One that's open and curious and friendly versus maybe a little bit more shy, maybe a little bit more awkward, maybe not kind of, fitting well into being in distress. So how would you personally connect to this? Well, do you know anybody like her? Do you know anybody who's got that personality? Who is who you can see in somebody else in your life or maybe in literary characters as well? Hey Jane, um, we just identified the the young woman with the colorful hat as Elisabeth Vigée Lebrun, and this is a portrait of herself, so a self portrait. So it's almost really fitting, as you pointed out, Jane and Rihanna did too, that she's got the colors on the palette that fit there. So, the personal connection question here is: when I look at a portrait, I see a kind of a kind of personality, a kind of person. So I ask myself, who in my life is like this? Or who do I think of when I think of movies or literature of a character like this? Open, gracious, 
ready to be friendly. Anything come to mind for anyone? Luke, I just have a question. Yeah. The personal connection be that just the person doesn't remind you of anyone. Absolutely. You'd like to meet that that that's someone that I would like to meet. And that's why I'm connected to the painting. That's why I like the painting. Yeah. And, and one way to go about the personally connecting is to take somebody in your life and put them side by side and say, how are they similar to or different from this person? So I can go through, okay, I'll, I'll do this exercise. Which of my high school students make me think of her the most? And I can go through, oh, no, not quite, not quite him. Oh, yeah, maybe him. Or who are, let me go through kind of a list of the literary characters that I know and see who might fit this. Scarlett O'Hara from Gone with the Wind? Mm, no, no. Uh, or, oh, Jane from Jane Eyre? Mm, no, maybe not. And so you can do it that way and trying to figure out a personal connection of who this reminds you of, kind of going through a list. And that's really helpful too. It's it's like bringing up a comparison image to isolate what her distinctive personality is. All right. And oftentimes I don't think of who she is or who she reminds me of until much later. And Jane, you're thinking from Alice from a town like Alice. Um, oh, that's a novel, isn't it? A, I don't know. I don't remember by who. Um, and I think I've heard of it. I don't think I've read it. And I think did they the movie was made? Neville Shoot. Oh, Neville Shoot. That yeah, I think I watched. Town like movie. Alice is Alice Springs. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, do you know the character? But Alice? Alice is Alice Springs. It's a it's a yeah. town in oh. the center of of Australia. Uh huh. So, I read that book and I don't remember it now. But okay. I did, the Neville Shoot books are good; they're good stories. So yeah. I recommend that. Yeah. All right. She looks like yeah. I don't. I'm like Joseph. I don't. Can't think of anyone who is like her. There's somebody I used to know who I wish had been more like her because then we would have been better friends. Uh, but she. But knowing she's French. Now it makes a difference to know that she's French. Like I can see what what the hand is. Will you have a seat here? I see. Um, she's greeting her next person. <laughs> have a seat here. So it's not, you know, I need this, but but indicating. Yeah. So if you'll just sit here, we can get started. Because yeah, so they has she hasn't started to paint the next yeah. portrait or the next painting, but she looks like she would be fun and sensible and there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of good qualities yeah and joseph when you thanks uh stephanie joseph when you had the quote pleased to meet you that just brought her to life for me i can imagine if she's the embodiment of saying pleased to meet you yeah because when i saw this in person i noticed her hand and it looks like to me yeah. it looks yeah. like she wants to extend it over the frame and shake my hand yeah there is a personal connection for me Go ahead. In this sense, there's a football team called the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and their original uniforms. They had a logo on the side of the helmet of a Buccaneer. And he had that same kind of hat with, I think it's called the plume. Yeah. Yeah. Logo. And he had a yeah. dagger in his mouth and an earring. And and I just thought he was so cool when I was a kid, when this, when the team came about. I remember that logo. Yeah. So that's what this, this is sort of like the female version. I love the way her hat is you know, sort of like an S. Oh, it, it, she does wear her hat kind of uh, yeah. in a dashing manner. Right. Yeah. Her hat was sort of pushed up. <laughs> so she cool. she might not have a dagger in her mouth, but she's got uh, brushes in her hand. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, you guys wanted to spend time with another painting? So let's do... Are you ready for something a little bit sadder? Why don't we do the one that was your favorite, number four? Oh, no, we're not going to do that one. Not yet. No, let's. I wanna, I'm very curious. I'm very curious to see about this painting. 
um, it's one that I, I, it's one I know the background story for, and I've, I remember spending time with it, um, but I don't know how other people react to it. So Stephanie would be one that I think is very powerful and I, and I find very powerful, but I am very curious to see how other people will take it. Okay. Are you ready? So this one. So let's do this reading kind of together. Um, and you can just type in the chat or make occasional observations, like write a sentence. Um, just we're kind of throw things at the board. Um, and if you want to chime in and say something, you know, a sentence or two out loud of what you're seeing, or just put it in the chat, please do so. So I'll ask a few questions as we're going along. What do you see going on? What is being prepared? Well, I see the ax now. Someone else mentioned beheading. And now I see. So I, I just imagine this is a, uh, this is one of those religious kind of things. This guy in the orange, the orange fur or whatever he's got here. Yeah. He's saying, you know, do you recant your whatever? Or, you know, they just trying to get a last minute confession or recantation or something. All right. All right, so and you're seeing you're seeing you saw the axe over here and he's the executioner, but this is the guy, the directing mind who's actually gonna hold her down and be right in there. And he's so why would you paint this? Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep <laughs> seeing what's going on. So you're imagining this character as the person who is extracting some kind of confession from her. Okay. All right. What more are we seeing going on? What more? Well, what is going on over on the left-hand side at the back there? Is that somebody else being readied? Or, like, have they got a whole lineup of people for execution today? Is this what this is? Is this a whole lineup of people that are going to be executed? Brianna, you put down trust blindly. What do you, what do you mean by that, Brianna? Um, I see that the man is taking this girl that has her eyes covered and she's trusting him to take her i don't know away or somewhere but i think he's taking her to her execution <laughs> oh okay so you're seeing uh -huh. you're seeing him guiding her mm -hmm. she looks like she's helplessly moving forward and she's trusting him She's got this blindfold on and she's trusting him and he's guiding her, but ironically guiding her to, to this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And All then right. what's going on with this creature on the, who's got the back exposed. It looks like it's been, there's bruising or cuts. Something's been going on with that person. This person over here. Yeah. So what do you see here? I thought it was clothes hanging in, on the wall. I didn't see the hands, <laughs> but yeah, it's a person. <laughs> I mean, it just could be that it's the the way the the cloth of the undergarment yeah. appears. But yeah, it looks like she's got gold here, gold here, and it's but it's torn. So there was something. It was ripped. Or is this? Is are you looking at this? That's making yeah, it ripped. That looks like it might have been ripped. A, 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 mm. Why would it be separated from? So I'm seeing I'm seeing like a a necklace here, the back of a gold mm -hmm. necklace right here. Oh, yeah. But they're but but look, they're all lined up. But what is going on? This one's fainted. Just... So let me let me get let me get Joseph. What are you seeing? I want to get you in here. What are you seeing, Joseph? Is it possible that the what looks like a woman against the wall that she's chained to the wall or something, or is she sighing? She knows. She's oh, over here. 
So you're wondering whether she's chained to the wall or whether she's just got her hands on the wall kind of sign and despair. Yeah, like I'm uh-huh. I'm third up, you know, my Okay. The other then, one, you know, yeah. The one on on the floor looks like she's like Stephanie said she's fainting or she's sighing, she knows she's next. Okay. The other one's crying against the wall or she's chained against the wall. We just don't see the chains. I don't know. Okay. It's and then, of- so yeah, you're wondering also like Stephanie, are, are they in line? Are they in despair because they might be next? Jane, you're saying he's looking away and Jane, I'm, I'm guessing you're talking about this figure right here who's looking away. Uh, Kate, is it an impromptu event? Uh, usually people were dressed well and women had their hair up. Okay. So, yeah, these these people are, are very nicely dressed if this is some kind of an execution. All right. So let me sum up what we have so far. And then I want to direct your attention to a couple of details. But Narendra, go ahead, Narendra. What are you seeing? You're muted, Narendra. Go ahead and unmute yourself for this. Oh, Narendra, you're muted. The left, the woman on the left who is leaning on the wall, she's, I think, despairing. Yeah. And I was not able to understand exactly that black man. Maybe he was, I didn't get him, actually. The hands were seen, but I thought that he was, hands were seen. So is he turning back and saying, go, God, no, or something like that? And the interesting thing is, these two are very steady. The, the woman on the left, the, the people on the left were despairing. On the right, they were very steady. The man is standing straight as if it's a, it has to be done and the red man standing. And this man is also very, very steady and he's trying to tell her like, it's cool, like all that. I'm not sure okay. whether he's trying, trying, trying to guide her or something, but both of them are very clear. They, they have a s- s- strong conviction that what they're doing is correct. Interesting thing is, all of them are in colors, but she's in white, pure white. And even this is blindfold is white. So that yeah. is a contrast. And whole place is very gray. It's very dull and gray with very bright colors this side, that side, all bright colors. And she's in white. So there's a, there's a lot of contrast. But I don't really know the, unless I know the background. I don't know why all right. she's well, let's, let's Let's summarize what we have so far. Narendra, you did a nice job of kind of going through. Figures in despair over here, these women in despair. And looks like the this is the executioner who is looking on with his axe ready while this young woman all in white is being brought to this, I don't know what it's called, uh, something there by this by this man who looks like he's an he's some sort of official, maybe church official, who seems to be guiding the woman who is blindfolded over here, almost saying, Yes, just move over a little bit this way. It's right over here, which is so twisted. It's like, let me help you get to your execution spot. Isn't that called the chopping block? The chopping block. And then you have these who are back here who are in despair. Now, Brianna, you're saying, now that I think about it, it looks like the women on the left brought the girl in the white dress there, and they feel guilty and don't want to look and even... Is wearing white. Uh, she even is wearing white, which means it's innocent. So you're thinking that she's with these two and that they are they have brought her here. Uh, almost like Stephanie's sacrifice of the virgin. Um I'll point out what does this woman over here in red have in her hands? Pearl? What does she have in her go ahead? A pearl necklace. A pearl necklace. Maybe it was the girl with the white dress. Maybe this pearl necklace belonged right. to the. I'm gonna Is it a rosary? Is that the a rosary? Remember you? <laughs> so, right here, she's got this pearl necklace. Everybody else has a necklace on. She doesn't. That yeah. would interfere with that axe. What else does she have in the lap? Does this belong to her? Or could it have belonged to her? You see, she's got this long kind of flowing cloak-like dress across her lap. (sighs) 
So here's what I'm imagining. She was with them. She had on these this longer dress over to the top of this. She had on the necklace. She took them off, gave them to her, had the blindfold put on, and is now being brought forward to put her knees on this cushion where she's going to be executed. All right. So this is a historical event. You ready for background story? This is um, an episode in English history. And the 1550s um, transition of monarchy. And then if you, I don't know the exact specifics, but this particular character is named Lady Jane Grey. Yeah, okay. That's right. Lady Jane Grey. And she was a threat. There was in a transition from, you know, King is dead. Now who's going to be the leader? And there's... Um, there's another heir to the throne, I think is Mary Tudor, who says, nope, we can't have her be alive. So for the good of the country, for the good of my reign or my, my choice of who's going to reign, she needs to die. So this is a political execution that is happening. And she is, in a way, a, a kind of unfortunate sacrifice to the the movement of hereditary monarchy forward the figure that she's with is some official not a religious official not any crosses but he's there to make sure that the execution goes through and i don't know of the particular relationships but it seems like everybody knows each other that this is these are friends here who are now having to make this happen. Obviously, Lady Jane here is friends with them. And if I push rewind on the scene, I can imagine the moments that she had with them right before as she takes off her pearl necklace and gives it to her. And now that they know what's happening, they've turned around in despair. And... This older official is now moving her towards the block. So let me ask you this. What do you imagine he could be saying to her? Is he saying, you will die now? Is he saying, get on with it, hurry up? What is his attitude towards her death, her impending death? I think he's apologizing. I'm sorry, I have to. Or just, I wish I didn't have to do this. Stephanie, he's you're being yeah. very caring about, like now hearing that story, now the way he's holding her, I see why you're saying it's, his, it's a political thing, not a religious. So he's more he's he's being caring, but he's been forced to do this. If he doesn't gonna do it, then some other brute might have done it in a more horrible way. So he's trying to make it as swift and as painless as he can. Okay. So what what quote would you give him to capture that? Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. Brianna, you have see you in heaven. Narendra, how about you? What are you observing? Go ahead. What quote would you use? Go ahead. Uh, and go ahead and unmute yourself. I've been I've muted you because there's a little bit of background noise. The the the, the last sentence, I would agree with Stephanie, but the last sentence I think would be it will be painless. Yeah. It'll be okay. But something like yeah, that. Yeah. It will be oh yeah, kind of reassuring. It will that's be painless. Meant. Yeah. Because the fear you fear. No, so say it'll be pain like anesthesia or something. Yeah. Euthanasia, sir. Yeah. Okay. Any other quotes for him? Hey, Mary Lynn, we're wrapping up, just about to wrap up, but uh, glad you could join us for a little bit. Uh, we'll have a recording of this too. So this is a dramatic moment. 
How would you personally connect to this? Which character would you empathize with? Joseph, what are you thinking? I'm thinking this reminds me of the death of Socrates. And one of the th main things is the woman against the wall. If you look at that painting, I oh, don't, yeah. man, he's, he's wailing the same way or something similar to that. So it's very, it's very similar to that painting to me. It doesn't look like it at all, but it's in, in many ways it's similar. So a similar kind of situation, a situation where you have got somebody you care about who is going to suffer something severe. Right. And if you, if I state it that way, make it a little bit more abstract, you might be able to put yourself in the shoes of, of her. Yeah, you being in a hospital room, you know, I mean, not yeah. to get, but like being in my mother's hospital room when she was dying. So that's where you, you can personally connect. I could personally connect. Yeah. yeah. Any any last moment? Any last moment that's and I I haven't had um anything like like that been at the deathbed of somebody before, but I I've been in in situations where I know somebody I care about is about to go through something that is going to hurt them, like they um they're they're going to get fired, um they or they they learn they're going to learn of um of something or somebody that they care about having passed away um and i can think about how might i might react to it um and probably react a little bit like them yeah stephanie go ahead i now that i know the whole story about it it's uh, really a concretization of today's uh, cancel culture. So although it's not a literal beheading, but there are people whose whole careers are destroyed and they're just shunned and exiled from, from the world. Um, and it takes a monumental effort to come back from it. Now, this young woman won't, but just that whole, for the political machinations, there's just so much sacrifice of good people going on right now. And so it's so now the painting has a whole different meaning. It does it does concretize what we're having happen in our world today. So what yeah. you're 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 using the, the artwork and the situation of the artwork as a vessel where you're imagining um scenario particular scenarios of cancel culture. And I would and I can I empathize the, with the woman in the in the brown dress who's holding yeah. the cloak of the girl yeah. and leaning against the wall in despair because that is how I feel. <laughs> yeah, 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 same here. I would uh, um, luck. I would. I, I had a friend, and she was going through a terrible time, and we had this sentence as a joke between us, a positive negative joke that what can we do? Like even now we joke about. It. We say what can we do? What to do? Something like that, like despair, like yeah. we have to face the terrible truth. It's quite a good abstraction. I agree with Stephanie. It's a very good abstraction of purity being taken out and what to do. The situation where you don't can't do anything, but it has to be gone through. Okay. Um, I want to wrap up this painting, and we're um, we're a little bit over time here um, by asking this question: What's your favorite detail? What's your favorite detail? In this painting? Mm -hmm. One detail that seems to have a lot of meaning for you. I'll give you mine. I think it's these right here that used to be, because I can imagine them being on her neck. I can imagine her being this beautiful aristocratic lady, but now they're off. That made it cinematic for me. How about you? What's one detail you especially like?
I think for me, it's just something about the white dress. Just the white dress as a whole. Um, I don't know. Just that's what really stands out to me that she's wearing this white dress. It really contrasts. It does. And it sounds like for Narendra also, that's something that he that's connected with you, Narendra, that, or that that white dress stood out. And Joseph, this adds to the to the cinematic effect for me too, because if and it's tough to project forward, but that white dress there's it's going to be a different color soon and it matches one, the... one more thing is her hands her hands are like she is blind now like yeah she's going she's helpless her hands, and that adds to her and yeah yeah up to, up to like that it's very evoke it's very touching her hands yeah. and she's like trusting yet going through the gallows so it's very yeah. very evocative that's her friends who are helping her out to get die it's yeah. very, very touching. Her hands are like that. Like she's blind. She doesn't yeah. know what's happening. So you, Narendra, you're the hands for you. Stephanie, yeah. Brianna, Jane, Kate, any? No, questions? I think it's actually the the central man's hands, the guiding, the caring mm. quality of that, that he he wishes this didn't have to happen, but he's powerless to stop it. And yeah, this is making me want, Stephanie, it's making me want to learn a little bit more about who he is and what his bond to her is. Uh, like as a favorite detail, because it's hard to find a favorite yeah. detail, yep. but that is one that's a positive where th there's so much going on and he feels like he, he doesn't see a choice, that if he doesn't do it, he'll just have his head cut off yeah. and, and somebody less caring could be the one who's in charge of this beheading that's going to take place whether he's there or not yeah okay brianna uh, go ahead. Yeah. i find like interesting that she's not fighting at all yeah she just just accepted her destiny she yeah. she's not fighting she's just uh, letting him guide her yeah yeah that's that is that adds to i think for me the tragedy of the scene yes. all right I'm gonna thank you for going through that artwork with me. Um, and I want to, man, that's a tough one, but it's really dramatic. It's really intense. And if you go to see it at the National Gallery, um, it's huge. It's life size, and it's it's magnificent to behold. Well, when you see it that big in person. All right. Um, I want to officially wrap up. And then if you want to stick around for hearing a little bit about oh, um, touching the art 201, uh, you're more than welcome to. So I'm going to have. Hey, thanks, Jane. Um, <laughs> you bet. Uh, I'm going to have more of these salons coming up. Uh, look for more Euro songs. There'll be about art uh, art museums from around England. Um, so thank you very much for joining me. If you want to stick around for three more minutes, I'm going to share some artworks that are going to be featured in the TTA 201 course and talk a little bit about it. Um, it's going to be something that I'm going to bring back, not just for this fall, but also looking to make it just simply a, a standard part of what I offer every fall and spring. Okay. So TTA 201, as I mentioned before, this is the course to go along with the book. Uh, I initially started teaching this course seven years ago and taught it for two years, um, 10 weeks long for two years. And then I stopped teaching it. And the reason I stopped teaching is because I started doing things that kind of put the course into application in other places. I was developing curriculum and training teachers in this in touching the art method. And I um, was working at an art museum training the tour guides, the docents. So basically, I was applying what I developed for TTA 201 to other audiences. 
Now I'm bringing this back now because I have the opportunity to do so, but also I'm bringing it back because I've learned more since then. Um, there's, I want to write at some point uh, a second edition of Touching the Art, an expanded second edition for all the things that um, I want to share more that you can apply to getting more out of the visual arts. I'll just give you two quick examples. One is a concept of empathy. I don't really discuss it explicitly in the book. I talk about the theme of an artwork as the situation a character goes through and what is their reaction to that situation. But this concept of empathy that's implied in that identification of a theme is something that, um, that I found really helpful and really helps to connect enjoying the visual arts with getting to know hu human beings with connecting to other literature. So that's one thing, that concept of empathy. The other thing is, this is seems like a pretty simple kind of thing, but um, I found to answer so many questions to get you to enjoy reading an artwork so much more. And that's simply to, um, to put a question mark after any conclusion you have while you're in the midst of reading to hypothesize more than to draw conclusions immediately the instinct when you make an assertion about a painting about what's going on in a story about what you you see happening is to say ah that's what's going on and then to defend that if you approach reading an agatha christie novel with oh i know who killed who committed the murder and you make that declaration, as you keep reading, you're going to find out you're wrong because there's more to the story. And in the same way, you can have that mystery reading mindset like, OK, let me keep going and try to figure it out. I haven't solved it yet. I'm going to put a question mark, and that encourages me to keep looking and to keep reading. And that's something that I don't really talk about in the book. Asking questions, forming hypotheses, and supporting them. Not necessarily to be a scientist, but to be a more immersive reader. So those are just two examples of the kinds of things that um, are added on to Touching the Art 201 from the last time I taught. Uh, you see some artworks? Uh, Stephanie, you're asking how much time would we set aside each week? So it'd be... Uh, each class is like an hour and 15 minutes. And then um, the there's like 15 minute homework assignments. So just doing a reading of an artwork. So just the practice of doing a reading of an artwork between each class. Um, and then the main thing is the presentation, the final presentation. And I'll mention that in a moment. But let me share some artworks. Um, I'll just do, these are kind of previews. So it's a, they're cropped, but just to give you a sense of some of the artworks we spend time with um, that I don't know that I've, I share anywhere else. So here they are. So there's a lot of drama and we're reading into the stories. And I'm just going to briefly share these with you. And this is just small portions of larger images. And you know, we try to figure out, you know, well, what's going on in the scene and, and we read the artwork. Um, we try to get to a lot of different kinds of characters. And each of these artworks that we spend time with, we we spend the time with them at different levels. So an initial reading, then an identification of theme, then um, personally connecting to those artworks. And unlike a lot of other things um, like that I have to publish in the course, I am not concerned about um, copyright because I'm not um, I'm not publishing this and uh, for the future. It's it's a course. So uh, painters like Norman Rockwell, like more modern artists, I'm including them as well. So. Just a little bit of a preview there. Now, Stephanie, to answer a little bit more about the time devoted. 
So this is a schedule and you can see it's broken down. Reading artwork, identifying a theme, making connections and empathizing. We spent a lot of time identifying what a great artist is. Um, and all this, all, everything is broken down for the culmination of the course to be your presentation. We um, we spent about, okay, what artists to look for and what, if we're reading art and we're looking for the story and the, and the theme of an artwork, what qualifies as a good artist? Uh, we look at portraits, landscapes, and still lifes, and how does that tie into um, finding the theme of an artwork? And then we get into the presentation portion. And the presentation is essentially you are you are picking out an artwork after we have a tutorial session together where we go through some candidate artworks. Um, we discuss some of the what you've learned so far, go through so, your questions, and pick out an artwork and prepare it. So have a discussion for, okay, what's the meaning of this artwork? What comparison images will we use? What are the connections? And then you would put together a presentation which would include your reading, maybe a more refined reading, um, the personal connection, the literary connection, the uh, the um, the identification of the theme. So feeling really good, really solid that you went through the whole approach with one artwork that is one that you really care about. So you come away from the course thinking, oh, I did it. Um, I, I went through it and I feel certain about what I got from my experience of this artwork. And not only that, I, I shared it with others. And that's part of the kind of certainty you go through with that. Um, there are other side topics, depending on time we might get into, um, like connection of music to art, which is something that is kind of new for me. Um, and I've spent a lot of time in the past few years, didn't have that and touching the art 201. Or how using uh, what we do with the approach we have uh, with TTA 201, how using that for our other genres like literature could be done or in watching movies. But basically the goal of the course is to make you feel like you, you, you own the method. It's yours. Um, Cause a, a lot of people, they say, okay, that's great. Luke I really enjoyed that. Uh, that was, that was fantastic. I went on your tour. I felt like I got spiritual fuel from this artwork, but I, I still feel like I need you to kind of lead the discussion and I don't want to lead the discussion. I want you to lead discussions. I want you to, feel like this this is not just I had the experience, but I can create the experience anytime I want to for myself. Okay. Any questions, thoughts? That was very interesting. Like, and the concept of empathy and mystery, reading, not knowing, yet knowing was very interesting. This. Not being yeah, too I'm, sure. This, this is, this is going to be such an interesting course. Narendra, um, not to, it's it's the course that I wish I had when I was sixteen. Yeah, even even I wish. Hmm. Hmm. Even these things, yeah. Yeah. So if you go to touchingtheart.com, you can find it there. Um, any more questions or thoughts? Oh, it's very intriguing. I'm, I really, I'm, I'm considering seriously. It sounds but like it's so much fun. The open-endedness so. was very interesting because that's what happens. Like you know, you're not sure yet what to. It's like going through a, a jungle and exploring something. Yeah. So something else is um, throughout the course. I'm one of the things that I, I constantly do is I'm very aware of. Um, okay. Of your personal context. Um, so I give personal feedback for your readings, um, because everybody has kind of, you're, you're bringing your psychoepistemology, your, uh, your consciousness to an artwork. Some people are more concrete oriented. Some are immediately go are more imaginative. Some are looking immediately for the meaning. So there's a, there are different 
basic approaches that every individual has. And I'm very aware of that. But there's also a kind of method to get to clarity, to get to certainty. And so you could you can you can ask yourself certain questions and practice the things that tie in most to your psychoepistemology. So if you're more like, oh, I see all the details, then my follow-up questions to you will be, okay, what are the implications of those details? Or if you are if you kind of float in the air and you say, oh, this uh, this this um, this seems like a, a sad tragedy of the fate of life. Then my follow-up question to you is, what do you see in the painting that makes you say that? So a very directed towards your individual psychopistemology as we go through. And the goal is to come away with feeling this certainty with your clarity of understanding of an artwork. Awesome. All right. Like three doors. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Narendra. I think I cut you off. Go ahead. It goes into your own self towards with great enhanced perception. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Very, yeah. very, very interesting. That one -to -one thing was very interesting. Yes. Good. Even happened. We thought it was very tragic and all, but we came out with something, something more than what we thought first about the tragic white girl and this. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, I'll throw. Thanks, Narendra. I'll throw this out there. Um, before I go, um, attending the live class is optimal, but if I know there's only one session, like Tuesdays at 9 PM Eastern time, if that doesn't work for you, I'm, uh, I, I'm thinking of offering, like you do the, rec you can do the recordings, but then I would still meet with you for a tutorial and you could, you'd still do the homework and, um, offer that up as a possibility. So if that's if the timing doesn't work for you, uh, let me know if you're interested in doing it remotely, but you'd, we'd still do the tutorial and the you'd have the graded homework. Stephanie, fabulous. You got it. All right, everyone. Thank you very Next much for joining time. me. Thank you. thank you. Stephanie, thank you, Brian. And thank you, Joseph. Thank you so much. Luck. Thank you so All right. much. Bye-bye. Hi, Luke. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brianna. Thank you. It's good to have you. Bye. Wonderful. Bye, bye, Vilak. Bye.